This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and good times here. This is the HP Spectre X360. We did a video review of that separately, so if you want to know everything about the machine, watch that video review. But this one's focusing on the pen. HP kept it a secret, really, that their HP Active Pen works with this, whether you get the 1080p version that we have here or the QHD version, so you can actually have digital pen input. And we're going to look at it now. All right, this is not a smackdown between the HP Spectre X360 and the Microsoft Surface Pro 3, but for those of you who are looking for something that can be a tablet and do pen input, it's worth considering both of these at the same time. Just saying, Surface Pro 3 uses Ntrig pen technology, a bit more mature. There are things like WinTab drivers available. The HP uses the HP Active Stylus, as they call it. Now, you can pick one of these up at Best Buy. They're about 40 bucks or so. That's what the box looks like if you're trying to find it. HP Active Stylus, it says actually on it, and that's what the box looks like. Anyway, this is Synaptics technology, and for those who've been watching our reviews of products with Synaptics inside, particularly some of the Dell Venue tablets, it's come a long way. It, it's much improved, and even as you saw probably in the Acer R13, it's a very usable pen now. We're going to try out several art and note-taking applications so you can see how it works. All right, first we're in OneNote. This is the desktop version rather than the Metro version. You can see I've been writing here. So we noticed with Synaptics pens before that sometimes you had to write in cursive rather than print because it would miss rapid printing strokes. So let's try printing. It's actually working pretty well, and it's not missing parts of letters or anything like that. Now you can see it missed a little bit over here. My handwriting is really atrocious, especially because I'm writing this at a funny angle right now so we can record this on video. But overall, it works well. Not bad at all. So, for those of you who are OneNote types, you're going to be happy with that. And let's take a quick look at the Metro OneNote application as well. If anything, this one is actually keeping up even a little bit better without losing strokes. It's certainly very usable, and you can see there's even pressure sensitivity here for a more natural writing experience. When I'm writing lightly, it's like that. If I press hard, it works like that. So definitely a go for you note taker types. Let's take a look at some art programs. Uh, Fresh Paint doesn't always have the best pressure curves. They have to try to support a whole lot of pens with the Windows Ink API, and sometimes they just don't get it right. Okay, so here we are in Fresh Paint. And I have a small black paintbrush assigned right now. And it takes more pressure than I would expect. It's not the worst, but this is just in fresh paint right here. Now let's compare it to a finger stroke. See how much broader the finger stroke is? So with this, you really have to press not terribly, terribly hard, but, you know, a bit more than I would have expected. Now it's fine if you adjust to it. Fresh Paint really doesn't offer a whole lot of customization in what they're doing with pen pressure sensitivity. Whoops. So there's that. And now we're in Sketchbook, alias Sketchbook, and we are, well, drawing our apple with the wrong color right now. Pen pressure is pretty good on this. Now with this program, you can customize the pen pressure sensitivity. I have a very light touch, so I tend to prefer it when th things are a little bit less pressure requiring this, but this is not bad at all. So I can do pretty natural, pretty quick strokes. And if we do the usual circle test to see pen latency, it's fairly good. Not quite up there with Ntrig and Wacom, but that isn't bad at all. So if I really want to sketch quickly, you say I'm going to draw somebody's face right there. A quick sketch. It's missing a couple of strokes here and there. So for those of you who are serious artists or professional artists, you're still going to want to go with something like the Surface Pro 3 and Ntrig or with one of the Wacom-enabled tablet PCs, either Wacom's own tablet or perhaps the Lenovo ThinkPad. But for casual artists, those just starting out, this isn't too bad, I have to say. So let's look at ArtRage. ArtRage does a very good job of supporting anything that uses the modern Windows Ink API for drivers. It doesn't require WinTap. They really spend a lot of time getting pressure right for a whole lot of pens. 
So let's work on drawing our apple here again. A lime green apple. Hey, that's cool. And this is missing some strokes occasionally still. But the pen pressure, very light line, heavy line. It does have palm rejection, but you can see right there it did pick up my knuckle. This has a pretty good hover distance, but once in a while you're going to have to make sure that it sees the pen tip. You'll get the indicator on the screen before you rest your hand. Otherwise you might have a little accident there. So that works. So let's test the speed here again for that. Uh -huh. Occasionally it's missing part of a circle. Not perfect yet. Not terrible either. Certainly enough that you could do a nice sketch with this. Pretty promising. So now we're going to look at Photoshop CC. This is the online subscription edition and I was testing out some masking capabilities here with this photograph. Say I just want to do a lasso selection. Something photographers would find much nice, nicer compared to using a USB input tablet or even your finger for more precision. And it makes masking just that easy. So say I want to, well, create a new adjustment layer or something like that. I've got that pretty nicely and finely selected without even trying very hard. So obviously that works pretty well. Let's try drawing. Because the latest version of Photoshop, Photoshop CC, does support Windows Ink API. You no longer have to have WinTab drivers. Now, if you have older versions of Photoshop, you're still going to need WinTab drivers, which don't exist for Synaptics, but here we don't have to have it. So let's switch over to our paintbrush tool. And this is, I didn't even have to change any settings out of the box. Light line, the heavy line right there. This is not bad. We'll do our apple yet again. Still, I see it occasionally lagging behind on a stroke here and there. It's, it's usable. It is not as awesome as Wacom or Entrig have become it. it. It's not bad at all. And I can do a pretty quick fill in to create a shadow under my apple there, but if I go too fast, it'll still lose some strokes. So there you have it. There is the HP Active Stylus, as I call it. Really, I would call it a pen because this is a digital thing. This is not capacitive. Actual has components in it. Has a quadruple A pen inside. You unscrew the barrel right here, and probably once every six months or so, you're going to have to replace that teeny little battery in there. But it's certainly just fine for note taking. It's decent for art. It's still not quite up there with the more established competitors. But who knows? In six months, the way Synaptics has been moving with this technology, it might be that much better. So that's the HP Spectre X360 pen input demonstration. Remember to watch our video review of this convertible Windows 8.1 laptop and tablet with Intel Broadwell CPUs inside. Full HD or QHD screens available. Lovely laptop.